So now in video seven, we're going to implement an example program using integer variables in PyAML. Let's look back at the example that we talked about earlier in this video series where we are taking a, an energy storage device, something like a battery, and that battery has a capacity which is indicated by a capital S superscript zero, and it's receiving energy in the form uh, QT at time step T and producing energy at uh, W sub T, right? And it's trying to maximize the revenue that it's getting from selling electricity uh, at, at any moment in time, um, <clears throat> which is captured by the price schedule capital P sub T. So overall, we're trying to maximize the, the operation, uh, operational revenue of this uh, energy storage system against some market. This problem that we formulated previously was entirely using linear variables, right? There's nothing uh, integer about this, about this problem. We have a set of time steps that we're iterating over. There are parameters that uh, may change with time, right? You have these uh, time indexed parameters, but the parameters are known in their, you know, known completely at the beginning of the problem. The only thing that's being uh, varied by the solver is the, the variables noted here, which are the power sold at time t, which is a continuous value between zero and some maximum uh, w max, and the state of energy storage s sub t. Again, the objective is expressed here as a summation of price and power over our time horizon. And then we had four constraints that we were working with. Uh, one related to constraining the maximum power, another related to constraining the maximum energy and storage, and then a uh, third with kind of two sub variants related to enforcing energy balance on this uh, on the battery storage from one time step to the next. Uh, really, there should be a fourth constraint written here, which is W and S uh, T and both in W sub T and S sub T uh, need to be non-negative for all time. So when we solved this problem, we saw that uh, power was produced. In the optimal solution, power is produced in the time periods that are uh, noted by the blue bars. So we had six time periods where uh, power coming from the battery was, was greater than zero. And we can see the energy in the, the, the cumulative energy that's stored in, in the battery is uh, decreasing down to zero. And we have a price schedule that we're, that we're operating against. So let's now consider a situation where the battery, uh, for some reason, must deliver power at the 50% of the maximum value or above for at least eight time periods. Previously, our optimal solution had, again, noted that we'd only need uh, six time periods to achieve uh, maximal revenue. But let's say, again, for some reason that, that there is a, a requirement that we produce, maybe our our uh, power purchase agreement contract requires that we produce in a certain number of hours. And so we need to maintain uh, that contractual obligation. And so we have to somehow enforce in our solution that this number of hours uh, sees production. If you think about what this implies, it means that we need to not only keep track of how much energy is being produced, this continuous variable W, the state of energy storage S, we also need to be uh, keeping track of, of a state, a state in the system. That is whether or not the, the battery is providing power. It's sort of a binary thing, right? So we're gonna be introducing a binary variable. It's an integer variable that is limited to the set of zero or one. And that binary variable for every single time step, uh, T, is gonna indicate whether or not the system's producing power. Once we've introduced that binary variable, then we can add constraints to it that uh, say enforce that the number of time periods is satisfied um, and relate the state of the operation to satisfying the criteria that we have. So let's look at our original formulation and how it's gonna be modified to achieve this, this, uh, this criteria. So first we add our binary variable. We're, in this case, we're gonna call it y sub t. So at every time step t, we will have a binary, which is zero or one, depending on the production state at that time. Uh, we add a fourth constraint that 
says if, let's say, for example, at some time period t, if I'm producing power, so then y would take the value 1. In order for y to take the value 1, it needs to meet the, the requirement that the power produced, w sub t, is greater than or equal to the maximum power times 50%, which is uh, given by this, this constraint that we had identified down here. So in the event that I'm producing more than 50% of the maximum power, y sub t can take the value 1. And that's true for every single time step in our horizon. The other constraint that we introduce is that when I look over the entire time horizon, I'd better find at least eight of those uh, that, that uh, satisfy that criteria. So these two additional constraints are going to help us achieve this, uh, this outcome. So now let's look at how this is implemented in Pyomo. Uh, 